Today we're going to talk a little bit about translations and how books get translated into various languages and published in different countries, how that works. So stick around and I will unveil the mysteries of translations. In a short answer, I have no power at all. I kind of do in that my agent chooses the publisher and we often select international publishers based on their reputation for doing really good translations. I don't have much involvement, if any. I think in like the eight years I've been being translated, I've been contacted twice by translators. One was Portuguese and then the other one I think might have been my French translator who was lovely and did send me a lot of questions to make sure that she was getting it absolutely right. I, I worked with her on several books in the end and by work with I mean after that I trusted her and she never asked any more questions and they were all perfect. Hooray France! If you look behind me these are all translated copies of my books and it's 24 languages for night school alone and like 12 languages for a beautiful corpse. Because there's so many it's impossible. It's generally impossible if every publisher and there's probably 60 of them were to ask me questions I would probably lose my mind so it's probably just as well that they don't. So not much involvement which is why sometimes the translations can be a surprise. <laughs> Odds are you won't be able to read the book in the language, so you have to trust them. And so you hope that they will do a fair translation, but often I, I, I don't know. And it never really occurred to me to worry about it until somebody was on my Facebook page talking about a night school character, Sylvan, who she said it was blonde. And other readers were interjecting saying, no, he has dark curly hair. And she's like, absolutely not. His hair is blonde. And she's quoting from her book. Other readers were sort of getting in the discussion saying, oh, in my country, he's redheaded. And I'm like, redheaded? Sylvan is not redheaded. <laughs> like, I did not write him. And then, so that made me think, what's going on? <laughs> Basically, what the hell are the translators doing? It was the first time the readers knew that they weren't reading the same descriptions of the same characters. And then I started thinking, if that's changing, what else is changing? Like, I have no idea. And it is quite fascinating. And in fact, I did once talk to a translator who didn't translate my books, but somebody else's. And she was a French translator. And she said the Italian for translator is one letter away from the t Italian for traitor. And there is a saying, translator traitor. I don't get as worked up about things being changed by translators as some of my readers do and I'm not sure why that is. I still trust them to do their best by the story and I think sometimes when they change the way the characters look it's because they know what the character is supposed to be. He's supposed to be attractive and dangerous so let's give him the look that in this nation is attractive and dangerous and that won't be the same as it is in another nation. Here's the good guy, the hero. What does a hero look like in Estonia? What does a hero look like in Singapore, you know, and so they will have their different variation on this. So I get it. I think my only thing is I didn't know and nobody told me we're going to make these changes, I suppose, because they expect us to lose our mind, which is fair enough. <laughs> I know that we are choosing the best companies out there as often as we can. I know they're doing what they think is best for the books to get them into readers' hands and to make sure readers understand what I'm trying to do in my language, to translate it in a way that they'll get the feeling, the same feeling that you get reading it in English or French or Spanish. So it is, it's an art and I am actually just really grateful that the books are out in so many languages that I can have this journey of discovery. I'll show you some of my favorites and some of my least favorites, so they're, you know. The French translations were some of my favorite and the French covers were some of my favorites because everybody interprets the books differently and this one, oh my god, nobody else used this picture. And this is the French night school fracture. <sighs> I just love it. It's just so cool. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the book and I don't care. It's just awesome. I loved this one. This is the Norwegian. I really like their interpretation of night school one, this bit looks like a sword, but it's a it's a fence, it's a gate, and she is, you can see the school behind her. Like, I think it's very clever. And they've given her the red hair that she has in the book in Night School 1 at the beginning. I really loved that. I thought that was a great, beautiful alternative cover. The German publisher did this amazing thing. They went through 125 covers. I'm not making that up. Before they chose the one they wanted, and they decided to go with a theme, and they designed all five covers for the Night School books at once. This is book one, I know, the blue. The red is book something. I don't know which one. I can never tell because they're not numbered. And also, the title 
titles taken together, if you take all five titles, it's a poem. It's something like the secret will be revealed, the darkness will fall, like it means something in German and it says something about me that in all these years <laughs> I've never memorized it, although I've been told several times. I loved that. It was so clever and it made them so collectible and the fact that they're so close and they look so beautiful together on the shelves when you have all the spines lined up. Like, and the German translations are obviously among the very, very best. They worked hard on really capturing it. They're little heroes to me in all of this. This is The Secret Fire in Hebrew. It's so fascinating. I just love the beauty of the language, how it looks on the paper. It's absolutely lovely. Oh, I've got it upside down. I've got it upside down. <laughs> How is that? It goes like that. That's how it goes. And then you read it that way. This is what I always do. Just so you know, in all my years, I've never figured out the upside down and backward thing of Hebrew. It's too hard for my little brain. The Hebrew readers tell me that the translation is, is perfect. Like they, many of them read in English as well. Let's just do Un Splendido Cadaver. Come on. The Italian, a beautiful corpse. It looks like a noir film. It looks like a poster for a 1945 film that would have like Catherine Hepburn in her first noir outing. Oh, somebody like James Mason, really gloomy and scary. Anyway, and now my favorite. This is my favorite. My book with Harry Potter on the cover. What the? Is that supposed to be Carter? Are they? Kidding me? That probably doesn't even say night school. That probably doesn't even say CJ Doherty. It doesn't, does it? This isn't my book. I would never know. What happened, Russia? What happened? This is why we can't be friends. We're not friends. I bear a grudge. I would not buy this book. Nobody should buy this book. And, and in fact, nobody did, as far as I can tell, because <laughs> I never heard another damn thing from Russia, and I don't blame them. As you can see, there's good and there's bad. And you have to take your chances, because you never know which one you're going to get. And then the book shows up, and Harry Potter's on it, and it's too late. Too late to save it. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out for my video about translations. Come back soon, because I'll be putting more videos up about more craziness in um, the life of a writer in a shed. Thanks a lot, you guys.